Hey guys, Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In this video, we'll be going over how to determine the bond angle between two atoms in a molecule. We'll first go over the steps, and then we'll go over several examples where we apply the steps. So the steps are, number one, draw the Lewis structure. Number two, count the number of atoms and lone pairs attached to the center atom. And that's going to give you the steric number, electron domain, also call it the number of electron groups. And then step three, we're going to use the Vesper table, which is what you see right here, to determine the molecular shape. And once you have the molecular shape, you'll also get the bond angle. All right, let's start with an example that you, you'll probably see, H2O. The first step is if you don't have the loose structure to draw the loose structure. Uh, if you're having trouble drawing loose structure, I, I'll attach a video in the description below where I go over in detail to draw that. But just to save time, I'm going to pre-draw the loose structure here. And it looks like this. Then the second step, we're going to count the number of atoms and lone pairs attached to the middle atom. So the number of atoms will be 1, 2, and then the number of lone pairs will be 3, 4. So that means our steric number, which is what SN stands for, is going to be 4. By the way, steric number is also called the number electron domain and then the number of electron groups. Then we're going to use the Vesper table to determine the shape and then the bond angles. So we have a steric number of 4, which is right here, and then we have two lone pairs. So that will give us a bent shape, and bent will, has bond angles of 104.5. So that means the, the angles between the H and the O, the H, O, and H is 104.5 degrees. Next example, let's take a look at another one that you'll probably see, CO2, carbon dioxide. The loose structure for carbon dioxide looks like this. Then we have to determine the steric number. So we have to count the number of atoms and lone pairs that are attached to the carbon. So we have one atom, two atoms, and then we don't have any lone pairs attached to the carbon. So that means our steric number is going to be two. We don't count the lone pairs on the oxygen because that's not the middle atom. You only count the number of atoms and number of lone pairs on the middle atom. So if a steric number two and no lone pairs, steric number two, zero lone pairs, that will give us a linear shape, so that means the bond angle between the O, C, and O is 180 degrees. Right, let's take a look at another example, XC, F4. So here's the loose structure, then the next step is to determine the steric number, so we're going to count the number of atoms and lone pairs attached in xenon. We have one atom, two atom, three atom, four atom, and a number of lone pairs, five, six. So that means our steric number is six. If we look at six steric number with two lone pairs, that means the shape is going to be square planar, and then that means the bond angle is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at one last example. PCL3Br2, and then this is the Lewis structure. Then the next step is to determine the steric number. So we count the number of atoms and lone pairs attached to, to the central atom, which is the phosphorus, and we have one atom, two atom, three atom, four atom, five atoms, and there are no lone pairs. So that means we have a steric number uh, five. If we then look at the Vesper table. A steric number five with zero lone pairs will give you trigonal bipyramidal. So that means the bond angle will be 120 degrees and 90 degrees. And that's it. That's how you, you determine the bond angle. The first step is to draw the loose structure. So once again, if you're having trouble with that, I know I skipped over that section here. Take a look at my, my video that I'll link in the description below where I'll go over that in detail. Then determine the number of the, the steric number and then use the Vesper table to determine the shape and the bond angle. Of course, if you aren't given the Vesper table on the test, then that means you're going to have to memorize this. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.